All right, um, end of summer tomorrow, last day of classes. We've had a um, great, not a good, a great summer. Uh, I've been really excited and really pleased with uh, uh, these guys' adaptation to our culture and our system. Uh, they've done a great job in the weight room. They've all made themselves stronger. They've all made themselves better. They bought into what we do. Uh, and emphasize in the nutrition part of it. Uh, body fats have dropped. Uh, conditioning's good. It's not great yet, but uh, that's what Fletch is for in the fall. And uh, then on the basketball court, um, uh, I think everyone has gotten better. And uh, uh, we haven't spent uh, a great deal of time on anything X and O wise. It's been very basic, very fundamental. And yet um, it was about making them better. And. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with that. We've, we've had just enough in. To, we did a little bit of five on five uh, at different points, but uh, very small amounts, one possession stuff. And uh, uh, again, I've been, I've been very, very pleased. And obviously uh, uh, not having a full, full roster here with a couple guys not here, I didn't want to get too far ahead. So that was intentional, but uh, a great summer. And uh, uh, these guys will get out of here and, and get their uh, their bodies and most importantly their minds rested and then we'll have an eager and uh, excited group when they come back on uh, start classes on the 28th. Was it a healthy summer too, Brad? Yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, our guys. Uh, I think that's one of the big, big uh, uh, benefits of the, of the weight program is, is it helps guys stay injury free. And uh, anytime you do that, uh, it's a positive. And you want everybody coming back, and, and they're actually going home and being smart. And uh, then uh, they come back, and we're uh, we're ready to roll again uh, that first week of September. Non-conference schedules out, Brad. Uh, just what was the idea behind what you put together there, and what do you think about it for your team? Uh, a lot was done when we got here. A lot was contracted already. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I think there's some some very interesting games. Um, obviously that. Uh, one everybody talks about is, is the game, the bragging rights game. Uh, you know, we found out uh, we got a great opponent in Wake Forest in the ACC Challenge. Uh, and then something that just shocked me uh, was 57 years not playing in in-state school. Uh, it was, was, was interesting and, um, you know, I think there's some excitement about that. Dave does a great job at DePaul and, and has them on the uptick. And, uh, you know, and then a, a game at uh, at UNLV uh, that will be in the MGM. They're out of their facility at that time for the rodeo and, and they will return that game uh, back to the State Farm Center uh, next year. Uh, so, you know, I think it's, um, it's, it's maybe not uh, uh, quite where we want it. And then we've got the Lou Henson game in, in Chicago against New Mexico State. And, and Chris Jans is a heck of a coach and, and has a great record and uh, a team that's been very, very successful. So, uh, you know, a game in St. Louis, game in Chicago, a uh, game in Vegas, and, uh, uh, and then a, a big game at Wake. So I, you know, I think our road uh, and neutrals speak for themselves. And then uh, uh, an MT, a multi-team event here that uh, we have four home games against good opponents, North Carolina Central and NCAA tournament team. Uh, Marshall's a team that has had uh, had a point guard enter, enter the draft and withdraw late. It's very good. And, uh, Coach D'Antoni has uh, one of the top three-point shooting teams. Uh, one of my dear friends is coming in a game we scheduled that I work with, Matt Figger at, at, at Austin P. Uh, he'll have that team playing extremely hard. And uh, uh, and then really the only game that I'm really concerned about and really thinking about is the opener on November 10th against Southern. So uh, I'm excited. It'll be a great challenge. Uh, I think that uh, – uh, it's exciting for this team and the fact that we've got a lot of new new players going to be in new roles and to see how that plays out. And uh, uh, Obviously, uh, Big Ten play uh, with a couple of early games in December, uh, getting these guys uh, dialed in as quick as possible is uh, of the utmost importance. Can you elaborate on not quite where we want it? You said the schedule is not quite yeah, where we want Yeah, I mean, it. I've said many times I like playing great people. And, and I want to play high-level people, and uh, uh, we'll work on that. You can only control so much. And, uh, you know, scheduling is very, very difficult, very challenging. It's, a lot of it's done years and ahead. Years and ahead. Uh, so you uh, – uh, but 
and we'll work on that in the future. The border war, what do you know about it, and have you had anything like that in your head coaching career, like similar to it? I don't think a neutral game in terms of of um, the state rivalry. I think you know I, I know a lot about it in terms of uh, it's always right before Christmas. It's always a game that I think encompasses the basketball world. The basketball uh, public knows about it because of it's it's that time. Uh, you know, for many many years, both teams have been great. Uh, and then it's interesting. Just you know, I make a big deal about half and half in the arena. And, uh, so, Conzo's a heck of a coach, and, and Missouri's got a historic program, and as we do, and, and I look forward to those games. I want our players to be excited about that. Uh, that's a long ways away. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, those are games that I think that are great for college basketball. I think they're great for our fans, and, and, and I enjoy those games. Most of the big rival games I've been a part of have been within conference, uh, within Lake, and, and uh, but uh, that'll be a good one to uh, get our ready, get our guys ready to uh, go for Christmas. Talk, talk nice. about style of play a little bit. Uh, you say you want to play fast. How are the guys kind of picking up on that? And and uh, do you think you have the pieces to do that this year? I think we're still working on all of all of that. I think we're we're uh, uh, we haven't spent a great deal of time. Uh, I think they're finding out how good a condition you've got to be in, how hard you have to work to do that. Uh, you know, sprinting is something that is not done often on a basketball court. We do that, and uh, but I, I, I love our uh, I love our versatility. We have a lot of versatility. Guys can do a lot of different things and play a lot of different positions. So that plays into that. And um, uh, you know, we're uh, obviously with a couple pieces here that we think will be a big part of that. It'll it'll influence us a little bit there as well. How did DeMonte come out of summer, and uh, what's kind of your game plan for him in September? You know, I, the one thing I think with, with, with an ACL is you don't rush anything. I, I, don't, I don't like putting, well, he's this percentage, he's that percentage. You don't rush that. And, and you, uh, uh, you go about your day-to-day -day grind in that, and, and you work, and uh, you strengthen it, and there's a lot to it, and strengthening the quad back up and so on and so forth. Uh, he's been fabulous in terms of his rehab and what he's done in that area. And, uh, you know, you, uh, he's partook in, in, in some of the drills uh, without a lot of the, uh, the cutting and doing any of that. And uh, uh, so I think his progression has been a, a, a natural one. And, uh, you know, we'll see as he, as he comes back and we, and we start school. For the freshmen that were on the court full time, uh, just talk about the growth you saw from them. How much did they progress? Well, I think that there's so much adjustment for freshmen, and it, everything is everything is from the coaches to the teammates, to the living arrangements to what they eat, and uh, then obviously Fletch. And I think the first two weeks were just simply uh, opening your eyes and, and finding out that the weight room is a little different than what maybe they've seen. Um, I couldn't be happier with them. Uh, I love this group. Uh, not just because they're good players, but I love their personality. I love they all have uh, a charisma about them that uh, that excites me. They're fun. Uh, they've worked extremely hard. I think that uh, as they continue to adapt to uh, uh, college basketball, you know, we, we always talk about uh, uh, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. These guys are going to get thrown to it early, and they're going to have to play. And, and uh, so my expectation level for them is extremely high. Through a full spring and summer worth of recruiting, how do you feel about the start you and these got in April and in July? I feel great about the start. It's the end that we need to be, um, you know, that's the important part. I, I think the one thing that is, uh, uh, I say this very often, it's the biggest challenge. The, the class after you get hired is the biggest in terms of it's the hardest. And you, you, you're making up for uh, – a lack of time in relationships. Some of these players at this level uh, have been recruited by schools for two or three years, and now you're trying to, to, to make up that ground in four months before they come on college visits. And uh, um, we've, we've, I think we've got a pretty good idea of what uh, and who. Uh, now we've got to get them on campus, and we've got to show them why. Illinois basketball is, is, is something special. 
the thing that they've got to understand is they haven't seen my product in blue and orange. They've seen, all they've seen is, is other things. So we're selling a dream to them and they've got to buy into that. And um, then we've got to get them here and let them see the game day experience of football or let them see what, um, you know, what our facilities look like and, and, and our coaches and how we go about things in practice. And, and that's really one of the final steps to, uh, uh, to the recruiting process. But I feel great about uh, uh, the who and, and uh, what we need. And, and uh, I think we're all in the right direction. That's a, that's a tribute to my staff. I got a great, great staff and done a great job. What about the class of 17? You got anybody still coming? No. Your two guys that have not been here, when did they arrive and what kind of communication have you had with Mark? Uh, we've been a lot. Uh, we talk uh, quite a bit. And, and again, he, there's a, you, you can't rush the process, especially in Mark's case, in terms of uh, getting final grades posted, getting uh, seals put on transcripts and sent. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, their arrival will be, uh, you know, Modich overseas has uh, orientation to go through. So I think he's coming in the 22nd or 23rd. He's had an extremely busy summer playing in world championships. And, and uh, you know, then it, we're, we're at the mercy of transcripts and going through the process with Mark. But, uh, uh, you know, here in a couple of weeks, they'll all, they'll all be rolling back in. I asked Kibber what that culture looks like, and the first thing he said was swagger. How do you feel like these guys are adapting? <laughs> Protection on. Yeah. Um, it's hard work. It's hard work, and, 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 and you can have swagger and confidence when you know you've worked hard. Otherwise, it's a false bravado, and that's not something that we're we're about. And uh, we've had days where I've really challenged them, and uh, uh, I want these guys to understand that good things happen to those who work hard. Uh, you know, we have to be everyday guys, and we have to have a culture that's based on work. And, uh, we have talented players, yes. We don't have the most talented. We got to have guys that come out and, and and want to play together, want to play for each other, want to be committed to each other, on and off the court. And uh, uh, we, that's not a twice a week thing. That's a that's an everyday thing. And when you do those things, then you can have the swagger. But uh, uh, we're about hard work, and that's uh, that's what we. Uh, I feel great about it this summer because these guys these guys did work. How are you doing in the uh, Body by Flesh program? I was really pretty good until uh, <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> uh, you know, for, for, for those of you who've never been around recruiting, it's, you know, just a simple day in Las Vegas for, for five days was in a gym at eight. So you're leaving at seven because of traffic and getting where you and you're literally all over Vegas. And uh, I don't think I ever ate dinner before midnight. Uh, as we sat down and figured out the next day's plans, and all of a sudden you look up, it's 1.30 or 2, and you're back in the gym at 8. So you do that for five days. So that's not conducive to uh, body by Fletch, getting up and lifting and uh, uh, getting my physical. Uh, but we're back on it now. <laughs> back to the schedule between the games that they were on there and then the ones that you're locked into with Gavin. How many spots did you have in Utah? I think we were three or four. Um, I think Joey handles most of it. I think that's right where we were. We were, we were uh, contracted pretty much everything else. And there's not a lot to schedule with all the uh, contracted games with the league and already done. So we added the Vegas game, Austin B. I think I added the non one uh, with, with Augustana. Known them forever. Timing fit. And again, scheduling is very, very hard late. It's not just us. It takes two to, to tango, so to speak, to want to play. And to find games was, was, was is, is very, very challenging. And, uh, uh, hopefully our schedules, well, we're almost done for next year. So that's how that's how late things things get scheduled. Joey's he's your point guy on this schedule. Yeah, he's a master at it. He kept us in the top five last year. He's, he's great at it. How did the two Big Ten games early factor impact the way you did the rest of the schedule? A lot, a lot. It's a different and it's new for me. It's something I haven't experienced. And uh, 
um, you know, I think you, you you have to get guys minutes. I know we're going to be uh, we're going to play freshmen. Uh, those guys have to have to see the court uh, and to go out and um, give those guys an opportunity to do that. Um, you're, you've got challenge. We've got different challenges now that the NCA has put on us with uh, mandatory days off and players have to have so many days and travel days don't count and uh, so. There, there's a lot that goes into uh, planning a, a semester schedule, but uh, uh, that was a big part of it. And, you know, you can, uh, I think everybody's got a home and everybody's got a road game here that first uh, Big Ten weekend in December. Uh, but, uh, you know, you don't, uh, you don't want to start off on to if you can help it. You need to be prepared as best you can. How do you feel about the Big Ten opponents from what you know? I think the league's great. I think it's going to be one of the best leagues in the country. And, and obviously, you can, you can probably start at the top. Everybody thinks Michigan State's a national champion uh, contender. But, uh, uh, you know, I think you look at the uh, what teams have back. You've got a, a team in Iowa who was extremely young last year, returns a great deal. Uh, Northwestern returns a great deal. Uh, Maryland returns a great deal. They lose mellow, but uh, have, a, have a bunch back. You can go right on down the list. Uh, and obviously, there's there's three new coaches in the league who probably don't know uh, a lot about their teams, and, and Archie, myself, and and, and Chris. But uh, uh, you know, facing John's teams at Michigan, I know they're going to be well coached, and Rogner shoots it. So I think the league's great. I think it's as as, as good a league as there is in, in the country next year. You talk a lot about implementing your offensive system. What about defensively? Kind of where you're at there. Is- Similar in terms of not putting a lot of stuff in? Basic stuff, stance, just guarding the ball. Uh, we, we didn't get beyond that uh, very little. Uh, that'll be the major emphasis coming back. Uh, this team will guard and, and, and will play hard. And, and we have to turn defense into offense and, and to get easy baskets. And uh, uh, put a little bit in there, but, but just very little beyond the basic fundamental stuff of of, of, of effort, you know, it's it's uh, uh, you know, it's like I, I've told our staff, it's like eating an elephant. You, we got to do a bite by bite, and uh, um, you know, we we've started the foundation, we start with the basics, and, and we'll build from there. But we sure don't want to miss uh, the beginning steps along the way. It's a little harder to come back to those. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a great August.